All right. So this video is going to be on graphing systems of equations. Now you might say to yourself, all right, what's a system of equations? All right, there are systems of equations. Well, what they are is it's when you have, um, when you're dealing with any kind of situation where you need two variables. All right, so if you think about anything um, that you would graph, anything like that, sometimes they want to compare that to another equation that's in two variables, and they want to see like where it meets, right? Or, and, and make comparisons like that based on that. So that is where um, working with systems of equations and solving a system of equation um, comes into play. So we are, when we talk about solving a system of equations, we are talking about basically where these two equations will intersect or they will meet. So um, that is what we mean when we say the solution to a system of equations. So let's take a look, look at this, um, this summary here. All right, so um, there's some language we kind of need to know here, some, uh, some terminology. So... When we talk about um, numbers of solutions, um, you should be familiar with the whole like one solution, um, infinite number of solutions, and no solution from just dealing with um, with with just algebraic um, algebraic things, right? So we are um, this is no different. Even though there's two variables, they can have you can have the same thing. The thing that is different though is we have names. We have, we have some extra names for them here, and they are right here. So um, when you talk about exactly one solution, right, I, I usually use the word distinct, um, but the, um, the resource we use calls it consistent. All right, so consistent, you'll notice that this one and infinite both use the word consistent. So basically the word consistent means it just has a solution. All right, it, it, has, it has either one or, or, or infinitely many solutions. Now, what makes this one different is that this one has independence. So if you think about it, if you say, well, somebody's independent, it usually means they're kind of doing like their own thing. So if you can think of that sort of as the number one, right, then that makes it kind of easier because you'll notice that in this example here, it just meets in one place, right? They meet in one place, and that is the one solution, and we call that consistent and independent. Whereas the infinite, and you can't see this, but basically what this line represents is two lines that are on top of each other. All right, so they're the, they're the same line, basically. So if you have that, where you have the same line, there is a there is a solution, but there's there's it's not just a solution, it's an infinite number of solutions. So it's consistent because there is some kind of solution for it. And we call it dependent because it depends upon what X is, what Y is going to be. And that's going to be a solution too. And because it's infinite, it can, you know, there's no end to the number of them. All right. And then the last situation um, we just call that inconsistent. And it's not independent or dependent because there's not a solution to it. So this is called inconsistent, right? The lines are inconsistent with each other. They do not meet. Um, and basically, you will get that situation when they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. Um, so they're very the parallel lines. You know, that's kind of the way that works. So hopefully that that little bit um, kind of makes makes some sense to you. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at um, a couple of examples and then um, see what see what we think about that. So let's uh, let's look at this example right here, and it gives us a lot of choices, <laughs> so to speak, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna color code this one up. So let's do. Uh, Let's do yellow for this first one. So for number one, we've got y equals x minus one, right? Oh, oops, I don't wanna, I don't wanna use that, do I? No, I don't, I wanna use a highlighter, all right? Not, not that, um, here we go. So we have y equals x minus one. So if I find that, that's this line right here, okay? So that's this, and then the next 
1 is y equals negative x plus 1. And that is this line right here. And so if you look at those, they meet in exactly one place. They meet right here at that point, the, the upper point right there. So they meet in one spot. So when it says, what is this? Number one would be consistent because there is a solution and it would be independent because there's one solution, all right? So it's consistent and independent, all right? So let's look at number two. So number two, let's, uh, let's see how many colors we can burn out here. We have x minus y equals negative 4, all right? So that's this guy right here. And then we have y equals x plus 4, all right? And you'll see that that's the same line, right? y equals x plus 4. And if you do a little messing around with these equations, if you, like, move things around on the second equation and put it into standard form, you'll actually see that you get the exact same equation. And that's usually the case for these. So we call that, there is a solution because they lie on top of each other. There's just an infinite number of them. So we call that consistent, and that would be dependent. All right? And that's, that is our infinite number of solutions. And then this one, the independent, the one above it, we would say one. That's our distinct case. All right, number three. All right, we have y equals x plus 4. All right, let's use light green. All right, y equals x plus 4. So that's actually back to this line right here, okay? And then 2x minus 2y equals 2. And that's, this, that's another equation for this line that we used earlier. So you have both of these, and you'll see that they uh, are parallel to each other meaning they're not going to touch. And if they don't touch, that means they don't share a solution with each other. So we would just call that plain old inconsistent. All right, it's not dependent or independent because there's no solution. All right, and then number four, um, y equals 2x minus 3 is this line right here, right? And then it crosses with our 2x minus 2y equals 2, which is this green one right here. And so that one crosses right here, right? And so we can see that that has one solution, so it's consistent and independent. Remember, independent. Somebody says, I'm independent. I'm an independent person. It means they're, you know, they're kind of alone, right? So that's one, one solution, All right? So... Anyway, I hope this little bit of terminology um, helps you moving forward. I know there's a bunch of Alex questions that kind of center around this. Pretty much the main takeaway for these is that, you know, you have these three cases, right? You've got the one solution, you've got the infinite solutions, and you've got the no solutions, and just understanding what those look like. So you can reference this, you know, as, as much as you need to. But um, that's, the, that's the big idea with this part of the lesson. All right, next lesson we will start graphing these.